Hello, dog lovers. Hope you're doing well. My name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. And in this live video, I'm just simply going to answer your dog related questions. If you have any, feel free to leave, uh, leave those questions in the chat area. I'm going to answer all your questions, dog related questions. We're going to talk about dogs. And also, I have some specials that you don't want to miss. So, all that and more in this live session. If you want to learn the negative effects of treat training which causes your dog to develop bad behaviors and health issues, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about our next video. All right, so let's get started. So there are uh, no questions at the moment, but they, I have some questions from the, the site, uh, the pay, uh, YouTube uh, page that I'm going, I have uh, put it aside to answer those in the live session. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and answer those questions. One of the questions is from Alexis, Alexis Stewart. He says, I have a seven month old Frenchie and I can't get him potty trained. It's like the, he can hold in the, his playpen area and all day, but if he goes to the door and you don't get there right uh, then and then, he he owes in the he goes in the floor. Sometimes he just poops and pees in the floor without even going to the door. Any help or extra tips? So this is a very common issue for you know, say puppies. Usually they cannot hold their bladder as much as adult dogs can. So what happens, they do call, they do have accidents. So the accidents usually happens when um, the bladder is full, right? So it's just to get excited, they can hold it, they just let it go. So what you wanna do in cases like that is always be a little bit so-called proactive. Proactive means what you do, you step out your puppy before it's the actual time before it's the time that they will have the accident. So you want to pay attention to your puppy's routine, understand when they usually go. For example, do they go every half an hour? Do they need to go every half an hour? Do they need to go every two hours? Do they need to go every five hours? Figure that out. And let's say if it's every two hours, uh, they need to go. Uh, but an, an hour and a half, an hour, an hour quarter, quarter and an hour quarter, uh, 45 minutes, just step them out uh, before they have any accident. So you want to be a little bit proactive and uh, do get going and get them out before it happens, before they just can't hold it completely. That one, that's one tip. The other tip that I have is basically um, make sure that your dog is on a proper diet. Usually when dogs are on a uh, kibble diet or dry food, what happens is uh, they tend to drink a lot more water than uh, I would say than regular puppies. And what that causes is when they drink too much water, obviously they can't control their bladder better than other dogs. So food also is very uh, effective and it's the reason why they do have accidents. So as soon as you change your puppy's food to fresh food or wet food, um, raw diet or home cooked diet, you will see that that those accidents starts reducing, they have less accidents as well. So yeah, definitely you wanna make sure that you're considering the fact, the reasons that your puppy is having those accidents, the, the main reasons is because they're taking in a lot of water. And why is it that they're taking a lot of water? Find out why is it that they're drinking so much water? If, if it's the food, if it's the, there's a health issue, there's something else, figure that out, address that, and it's gonna solve all, all other issues. And there was one more question. Um, uh, 
and yes, this uh, from Mei, Mei Lin Ong, it says, I have an own a beagle puppy that is very naughty, and when she does something wrong, she gets smacked really hard with the, those bamboo sticks. I don't want her to do it, but I can't stop her. Please help. I'm afraid of a pup, my puppy falling into anxiety, stress, and aggression from this. You know, this is, uh, you know, the wrong way of punishing or correcting a puppy or a dog. And uh, make sure to watch my video on Tuesday that is going to be released. And I'm going to teach you and show you how I would punish. I wouldn't get really physical with the puppy. I don't like when people get physical with their dogs. And because they get frustrated, they get anxious, they get they get into that zone that okay, this do dog is driving me crazy, so I'm going to physically uh, punish the dog. And when you physically punish a dog, you're not going to get good results or good feedback. So you don't want to physically punish a dog, any any animal, right? Because it just doesn't make sense to them, and also your approach is not going to be effective eventually. So never get physical with a puppy especially with a dog with a beagle puppy especially you know they don't they don't you don't need to get physical with your beagle puppy especially uh, they are very soft animals soft breed so you shouldn't be uh, using a, a technique that causes pain and fear in the in the puppy or the dog so watch my coming video upcoming video uh, and learn how I would punish. So these are the questions that I had that I wanted to address. And I'm going to come back to some more questions from the channel. But I see so there are some questions on the on the chat area. We have Bromer. Bromer is asking, my five months border collie doesn't want to follow commands without food. How can I support his will to please? This is an amazing question. I was actually going to talk about this too. Um, what if you're saying your you're saying your dog doesn't follow commands without treats, uh, especially that you have a five months old, a five months old puppy or any dog in general, any dog. If you have a dog and they don't listen to you or the commands without treats, what's the solution? One thing that you have to understand is that when we say, okay, my dog is not listening to anything without, without treats or food, that itself you're limiting yourself. So you, you believe if I use treats, everything is going to work out, right? But that's the wrong state of mind for you to be, first of all. You, have, you think that's the only option and that's the only option that is going to work. Just pretend that you are in a desert island, right? And there's nothing, no food. You, It's you and your dog and there's no food. How are you gonna survive with this dog without any food? How, gonna, how are you gonna communicate? How are you gonna uh, teach this dog to be with you? The easiest answer that I have is, you actually don't need to do anything. Dogs have been bred and designed for humans, by humans, and they will do anything for you for free, for free, right? So you don't have to pay them in order to see or to get results. That's the wrong mindset itself when you are thinking that I have to do, I have to pay something to my dog. And when you or in that path, that mindset, you're limiting yourself from opening up your mind and your technicality and your ability to do something uh, different with your dog, right? So every dog, all dogs have been bred by humans for humans to do things that it doesn't include food. That's the, that's the natural process of breeding dogs and having a dog. Now, every dog will do anything for you just because you're interacting with it. 
that interaction that you're getting from your dog is the uh, or your dog gets from you is the best reward for your dog so for instance you want to teach your dog you say okay i'm going to teach my dog uh, sit right i'm going to teach my dog sit what do you do what do you do you just sit sit come on rover sit rover sit come on sit do it without treats if you do it if you're that state of mind yourself and that's what you're doing and you know family members are around your tv is on and your music is blasting on the background and the kids are running around and family members are yelling and all that and you're saying i want to teach my dog sit of course nothing even if you have treats you're not going to get results the right way of doing it is really be in the moment with your dog Turn off your everything, turn off your computer, music, phone, the mindset, the clear your mind. Don't think about work, don't think about anything. Cre create an environment that is calm and relaxing, and it's an environment that you actually can relax. And your dog can also relax. And when you both are relaxed and in, in calm state of mind, and you're in tune with your dog, literally, emotionally, physically, mentally, you're, you're in, tune, in tune with your dog, and you're just having fun. Like, you know, you don't have to really celebrate, have fun, just have fun be, being in that moment with your dog. And if your dog doesn't sit, that's okay. We can try this a few times until we get it. But don't expect your dog to sit and listen to your commands all the time in different environments that is not ready. When we are training a dog, we have to create the right environment, right state of mind, right uh, energy level. No matter if you're using treats or not, you have to create this. You have to create a, set up an environment, an area that your dog can focus on you. And if they are able to focus on you, you will get, get better results. You will get great results. On top of that, if you start using play and praise, adding play and praise. One of my students, uh, not student, one of my fans actually, who has joined my private uh, training um, page on my Facebook, just posted a video that she has a puppy and she did a, a course, uh, you know, a challenge we, which we have offered that the dog has to walk between two things, right? Uh, let me see if I can show you the example that I'm saying. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Um, give me a moment. I'll go there. Yeah, this is a great question, and I'm I'm trying to spend as less time mm -hmm. as possible on these questions. Um, but this is a great question, mm -hmm. and I have to really, uh, uh, really. Um, Answer it. So here's here's the challenge. Yeah, I had asked uh, one of my uh, some of my students to you know to use anything that they could to create an area, a narrow area for their dogs to be walking in between them, right? So so what I asked them to do in this case, I used a, a couple of two by fours to get the dogs you know to have that challenge. And you can see the environment that I have created is very calm and it's just me and the dog. And it's just, this challenge is just to go between these two, uh, two by fours. And what happens in you, you just make it narrower and narrower and you just walk between, right? Challenges like this. And this fan of mine, what he, she had done was she, instead of two by four, she had put cups which is even more challenging, right? And she had posted this video in our private Facebook group 
just to show that how simple dog training is. If you do everything properly and with the right state of mind, you will get results. So you see, I'm just making it even narrower and I'm asking the dog to walk in between them. It's very challenging, you know, games like this, uh, activities like this, it's very challenging for dogs. For us, it seems easy, but it's very challenging for dogs. And when you play these games and do these activities, that's the real results that you get. That's when you actually say, you know what, I'm, at, I'm doing training and I'm, I'm, I'm actually training my dog. You know, getting your dog to sit and not li to listen to you is piece of cake. You can do it as long as you pr create an environment that is ideal for uh, your dog and uh, it gets the stim stimulates your dog's brain and gets them going, gets your dog to pay attention to you. You are in the moment. I guarantee you, you will get results. So I hope that answered your question. I, I hope everybody got some great uh, content from there. Before I go to the next question, I wanted to let you know that I have a special going there. And this is a special that I, I don't usually offer. And this is only available from today till next week only. So for a week, I'm just offering this sale which is a sell on my one of my online courses, which is called Intro to Dog Training Without Treats. In this video course, you're going to learn the basics of how to train your dog. So if you are willing to join and are serious about training your dog and understanding how simple it is to train a dog, especially using play and praise and without the use of treats or food, this is an opportunity for you to join in. In this intro to dog training without treats, you also get just this week a 15 minute Zoom call one on one with me that you, you can answer any question that you have, any issues that you have. You can work, work with me one on one. I'm going to give you 15 minutes and I'm going to give you a good plan and understanding of how to solve that. All you have to do is just go to my online courses sorrow dog training slash courses and that's the course that you're going to be registering and i'm only charging for this twenty dollars twenty dollars so just twenty dollars so you're going to ask why are you even charging twenty dollars because i want those who are really serious and are committed to work with their dog and train their dog to join this okay those who are willing to commit, uh, invest time, effort, and also that $20, the, those who are serious, those who are serious can join this uh, session. And I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to get solutions. You're going to get real solutions when you join this course. I will offer you solutions plus you're going to go through this course itself which is packed with with information so all you have to do is just go i'm going to put the link in the chat area sorrow dog training dot com slash courses and just join the one that it says sorrow dog training 101 beginners level dog training without the use of treats intro to dog training without treats okay so that's the special that i'm running today this week and it's going to be only available for a week and only those who are serious can join this course i hope you will take advantage of that all right let's go to the next question which is from benny blanco uh, I have a three-year-old Chihuahua and he's very picky, doesn't want to eat and kind of dog food, I tried everything. So when your dog is picky and is not eating things, that's a clear communication from your dog's point of view that what you're offering is not the right food for your dog. 
never ignore that. Never blame it to the dog on the dog and say, you know, my dog is picky. It's not that they're picky. They're saying, okay, when I, when I eat this food, it doesn't make me feel good. So I don't want to eat this food. So most of the time, when dogs are fed kibble or dry food, no matter what brand you're buying, no matter how much you spend on that kibble or dry food, your dog is going to say, you know what? I don't feel good eating this. Even though you spend hundreds of dollars on this bag of food, I don't feel good. So there, it's not that they're p- being picky. They're just clearly communicating to you that what this food is not good for me. Most of the time, nine out of 10, all you have to do is change the diet. So from kibble or raw kibble or dry food, you have to move to either raw diet or home cooked diet. And if you need information about uh, home cooked diet, raw uh, raw food, and diet in general, and how what what am I talking about? Home cooked diet, uh, raw diet. What are those? What are you talking about, Sorrow? Uh, all you have to do is just go to my YouTube channel, right? Uh, Sorrow Dog Training YouTube channel, right? You see it. Go to playlist. So there are videos, playlist. Go to playlist, and on the playlist, choose dog diet. Explain. Dog, diet for dog. Dogs explain. There are 25 videos. You don't have to watch all 25 videos, but watch as many videos as you like. Uh, There are videos here that are going to explain to you what I mean by feeding the right diet. Okay, Benny? So go ahead and watch those videos and learn what you you should be feeding your dog. Nine out of ten, nine and a half out of ten times is that your dog is asking for fresh food. It's not that they're being picky. It's just saying that I don't feel good uh, eating this food, which kibble usually is highly processed food, is lacking moisture, is full of toxins and garbage, which dogs don't want to eat, don't feel good eating it, right? So try that. Next question is from XX. My eight month old dog attacks me when I try to put a muzzle on him. (laughs) Okay. First of all, you have to understand that muzzle usually is not comfortable for any dog. You have to desensitize them before you can use it. First of all. Second of all, if you have to use muzzle that itself is showing that you are not highly invested in training your dog that you're depending on muzzle that itself it tells me that you haven't invested enough time training your dog and also your dog doesn't trust you and you don't trust your dog and your relationship is really in in not not a good healthy state so therefore you have you are forced you are forced to use muzzle and your dog is forced to use a muzzle and when you do that your dog says uh i am not liking this i don't like this in this situation i don't like this uh relationship i hate it and usually when that happens they will respond back right overall what i need you to do is start training your dog so you don't need to use the muzzle an eight months old why are you why are you why do you need to use a muzzle if there's opportunity and time for you to still to train your dog when 
uh, when a dog is doing that, that means the dog is retaliating, right? So, and also it's a lazy way of training when you're using gadget. Any gadget that you start using with your dog, that's that sign that you're lazy, you're not taking time to train your dog. So invest in time to provide your dogs daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. And you're going to see that you're not going to need the muzzle. You're not going to need tools to, to live with your dog. So either you're lacking all of these with your dog, or you're not providing them properly, or some of these are not being done properly, or you're not following this formula which is to provide your dog's daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and then infection. Focus on providing these. If you need more information about learning about these five essential needs, all you have to do again, you have to go to my, you can go to my YouTube channel, right? And on top, there is a, a search button you're on my channel there's a search button just type in needs and watch this video okay watch this video learn about what you're supposed to provide and remove the need of using any type of muzzle or tools to train your dog okay Next question is from Katherine, and hello, my dog keeps on play biting, and he is starting to bite harder. I'm scared that it will get worse. I love your channel. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, that. Thank you for that feedback. Uh, the reason he um, your dog is biting and is getting worse and worse, it's a sign that your dog saying to you that yes. First of all, I'm bored. Second of all, you're not focused on training my daily five essential needs. Therefore, I get bored. Fourth, the, the third is probably uh, the, the bite inhibition hasn't, uh, hasn't improved yet, hasn't gone away. What that means is you need to provide also other dogs for your dog to play with. So they can practice bite in the mission on each other, on dogs, rather than you humans. So many dog owners, what they do is they skip this process of introducing their dogs to other dogs and allowing their dogs to practice doggy related behaviors with other dogs. And if you don't do that, and or if you don't give enough opportunity to a dog to do that, they will practice it on you, on your hands, your arms, on your legs, on humans, which is not ideal. So therefore, you want to provide dogs for your dog to play with. Also focus on providing the daily five essential needs, exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, and the biting is going to go away. It's just a matter of not giving enough focus to the dog that it pay it says you know what i'm bored and your dog has selected to bite right uh, your puppy or your dog has selected to bite some other dogs they dig a hole they chew walls and things like that so uh yeah i actually yesterday i had a call from Somebody calls me and says, oh, the same thing. My dog is chewing my hands and my arms. My puppy, it was a puppy, uh, and he's driving me crazy. I don't know what to do. It's getting worse and worse. So I said, um, "Have you? what do you do? Does he go for walks? No, really. I put him in a stroller, and I take, a walk, take him for a walk around the block in the stroller, you know, those doggy strollers. 
I said, how old is the puppy? She said, three months, three and a half months old. I said, well, go ahead and start walking this dog on four legs, first of all, and take it outside and do, uh, you know, doggy stuff with the dog. Let the dog to do the doggy stuff. Let the dog play with other dogs. Give that opportunity for the dog to socialize and practice these doggy related behaviors with other dogs. Oh, it hasn't had the shots yet. Uh, who cares? You know, the shots, uh, you know, the vets usually in this day and age uh, are getting a little bit, you know, they, they're not educated enough in this day and age. We don't need to wait until they're fully vaccinated and then socialize the dogs. We need to socialize puppies as soon as we can. As soon as we have the puppy, you have to socialize your puppy. You have to let the puppy mingle with other dogs. Don't worry about the shots. One thing you have to remember is uh, that your puppy or your dog has already been born with immunity, fully immune by mom from birth for a few months. The mom already produces those enzymes and those all the things that it needs for a puppy to be born to fight against all the um all the diseases that are going to come and attack the puppy when it's born and starts growing up mom has already done the job and you just have to you just have to you know uh, worry about mental state of the the puppy right so the puppy has been already uh, immune to all the pathogens that are going to come across for the first few months so don't worry just go ahead and let your puppy socialize with other dogs right so yeah if you're saying three months old beagle there you go yeah the lady who called me was three had a three and a half months old puppy the same thing <clears throat> so i'm ask, ask answering you the same way just give me a moment i'll be right back getting hot in here I need to turn on the fan okay it's getting hot in here all right okay <laughs> so I uh, Catherine I hope that answered your question uh, let's go to the next question uh, Almina Agus oh not a beautiful name I love these names Catherine Almina Irina is coming. All right. Okay. Let's answer Almina's question. How can I train my dog to go potty outside when I live on fifth floor apartment with no lift? My puppy is Pomeranian, three months old. Great question, Almina. Right. So if you have a puppy and you want your and you're living on the fifth floor, there, there are a few things that you can do. There are a few things that you can do. First of all, you know, you have a um, three month old puppy. That's the challenge. That's the that's the challenge that you have for next month or two. Also, I would say that you're going to uh, you're going to be having this trouble of, you know, getting your puppy uh, fully potty trained. That will take some time. And that's the part of owning a dog. It's just like babies. The first few months, you don't have, you don't sleep. And when you have babies, you don't really sleep. You don't, they're on and off, right? The same thing applies with the puppies. You have to understand that part, that's part of life and living with a puppy. Number two, if you want to reduce the number of times that you're going to go up and down the the lift without with no lift r change the diet that is is my number one tip change the diet start feeding fresh food get meats and a little bit of vegetables cook it yourself or give it f for uh give it raw as is for the next few months just 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 if you don't feel comfortable forever to feed your dog raw or fresh food at least do it for now. So it will reduce 
the amount of water that the puppy is taking. If you're feeding dry food or kibble, your puppy is forced to drink water. And unfortunately, when they are thirsty, they have to drink water. And when they're drinking water, their bladder is full of water, they have to pee. It's just common sense. So if you feed fresh food or raw diet, your puppy is going to drink less water. Is going to get natural moisture from the food that is eating. Therefore, it's going to reduce the amount of pee and also the poop is going to reduce. Therefore, you're going to have less trips up and down. So that is my number one tip for puppy potty training. Now, if you want to learn other tricks and things like that, it, that is those tricks and tri tricks and tips are only related to those who are eating kibble or uh, dry food right but if you are willing to invest a little bit of money in your puppy's um, health and well-being just go ahead and you know feed fresh food meat and a little bit of vegetables don't worry, you'll be fine. Your puppy will be fine. Probably your vet is going to say, oh, it's not a balanced diet or it's going to kill your dog. I guarantee you, not, or not that. Here's, here's what I did with my puppy. And he's alive and he's healthy as, as it can be, right? All I did was fed uh, fresh meat, a little bit of green leafy vegetables, and one egg, one sardine, that's it. That's all I feed my dog. A little bit of uh, cooked uh, lentils. I was putting a little bit of cooked lentils because she was, uh, when she uh, when I adopted her, she was very skinny. I wanted her to fill up a little bit. So I started giving a little bit of cooked lentils as well. Um, so she was fine as carb I, I fed her a little bit of lentil, lentils cooked lentils as carbs right so that's all i fed my dog and she's healthy 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 right uh, and she runs around and plays around and has uh, energy like um, um you know a, a one-year-old dog would do right so yes you can add some carbs in there if you want to add some carbs like uh, cooked lentils or yams you can add that, but definitely uh, feed raw or a little bit of cooked meat with a little bit of raw green leafy vegetables, one egg in there, a little bit of carb, you're good to go. You'll see that the, the, the need of drinking water is going to reduce, the accidents are going to reduce, you don't really have to go up and down, maybe now you're going... Um, six times let's say you it's going to be reduced to two times two times you're reducing it that much so consider that irena 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 or irena i think yes hello sir we have a 18 year old beagle and he's used to sleep in my bedroom during the night for about six months now, he's peeing on his bed and not sure why he's having this setback. Uh, well, eighteen-year-old beagle. That is very common, actually. To you know, wow, you have an eighteen-year-old beagle. That's amazing itself. First of all, let me say that that you you know. Beagles usually live up to 16 years, but you have an 18-year-old beagle and is having accidents, obviously is going to have. Um, they just, you know, when dogs, they get old, they turn into puppy, right? They can't hold their bladder. They can't do things uh, that um, a regular adult dog can do. Uh, so it's very common, it's very normal, it's natural, normal for an 18-year-old beagle to pee in his bed. 
maybe what you can do, you know, you know, there are these pop, pop, uh, dogs, um, dogs, uh, you know, seniors, uh, senior, seniors usually they have accidents in, in, in rest. Uh, diapers. There's diapers that uh, you can use. Uh, you know, as we get older ourselves, uh, we start wearing diapers. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but uh, you know, as we get older, we need to manage it. Now you have to manage it in a way, right? So yeah, I, I would suggest you know a diaper, doggy diaper that you put on your dog. Uh, let it wear it during the night so it doesn't mess up the the bed and the car, uh, the the bedding. Um, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, you know. Yeah, my my own beagle uh, Jonah, around 15 years old, uh, he started doing having accidents. He just was having accidents. Uh, you know, as we was sleeping or as he was walking, you would just have accidents. All right, uh, lots of questions, but let's go through them. Um, uh, how can I correct the regression during the night? Yeah, the, the other, well, one tip that I have is that, the, you know, the prevention, which is the diaper. The other tip that I have is again, you know, just start feeding fresh food too. That will reduce the the the, the force or the pressure that it puts on the di uh, you know digestion system, uh, on the on the uh, on the, um, the organs. So they don't have to work as hard when you feed fresh food. It reduces the 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 energy flow and it helps the dog to have easier time to digest the food so yeah definitely uh, diet diet will help too yeah it will reduce the intake of water hmm i didn't get the alert that's strange usually youtube sends the alert but it, that's good to know that YouTube is not doing a good job. It's good to know. Mm. Okay. Uh, may I ask everyone, did everybody get uh, a notice or alert from YouTube about this live session, live show? Can you mention, can you let me know in the chat area? Did everybody get notice notification or not? Oh, you, you, uh, that makes a big, you know, 18 months old. Uh, when it comes to 18 months old, <laughs> well, you know, that, that doesn't change much. That my answer doesn't change much. Um, yeah, my answer doesn't change, you, you, but except the diaper. You don't have to work with the diaper, but change the diet. The diet will help. The diet will definitely help. Um, Cherish is uh, asking, how do I get my eight-month-old beagle to stop barking and pay attention to me when she's so driven by where, whatever is distracting her, i.e. other dogs, other people, kids, sometimes treats work. Um, sometimes treats work. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the key word, sometimes. Um, you know, with beagles, they are so, um, they are so, uh, social. They want to be go uh, and be going and you know interacting with other dogs, other people. They're very social, good dogs that they want to have that opportunity. And when you stop them from doing that, it drives them crazy. It it stresses them, and that leads to barking, right? So one of the things that I would suggest you to do is use a long leash when you're going for a walk. The first, let's let's advise. Let me use this advice first. Use a long leash when you're going for a walk. Use a long leash. So when you see that your pup, your beagle is interested in certain dog, you can ask the owner from far away. 
uh, is your dog okay for my dog to come and say hi? And they say, oh, yeah, my dog is friendly. Then you can let the long leash do its job and let your pup, your beagle go and say hi to other dog, right? That itself, it reduces that stress. Uh, now, if... If you, if you can't control your beagle on the walks, I highly suggest you to work on improving the walks before you get into the park. Uh, let me explain quickly how it is. So when we, we do training a dog, we don't go from A to Z all of a sudden, A to Z all of a sudden, right? We take steps. We go A, B, C, D, E, F, on and on, right? People usually go from A, which is their home, to the Z or Z, which is the dog park, in matter of days or hours, okay? So when you do that, your dog, your beagle, hasn't been familiar with all other steps, so you have to introduce the steps slowly before you can go from A to Z, from home to park. Park is the last place that your dog is being exposed when you're training your dog. So here are the steps. First step, we break it down to five steps. Step one is your home. You practice the leash walking or the walking at home in your living room. Step two is practicing the leash walk in the backyard. If you're living in a building, in the hallways is the next step. Once you have gone through this step, then you go step three, which is front yard or if you live in a building in the parking lot. Step four is the streets. You go on the streets and you practice the leash walking techniques. Step five is the park, right? So from step one to step five, it may take you six months, it may take you 12 months, but you have to take those steps from going step one to step five. Now, the breakdown of step five is a little bit different. Step five, which is the park, is we break it down to three parts. The park it itself, it's break, broken down to three parts. Pla park level one, which is there's no dogs, there's no humans. You will drive somewhere that there, you find a park that there is no human, no dog. You practice there for a few months. Then you go practice in a level two park, which there's a little bit of dogs, a little bit of human, maybe a jogger passes by once in a while. Level three of dog park is the dog park itself. You take your dog to dog park and you expect your dog to pay attention to you, listen to you. So from the home to the dog park, it may take you six months or a year. But people, what they do, regular dog owners, what they do is they get a dog. Next day, they're in the dog park and they expect the dog to not to pull and not to, uh, and to behave perfectly. Of course, your dog is not ready for that environment yet. I'm not saying don't take your dog to dog park, I'm saying don't have expectations, but also start Tra training and practicing A, B, C, D, all the alphabets, all the steps, before you get to the point that you say, you know what, now I should expect something from my dog. I've done my part, we've practiced, we've trained, hopefully we've done the part that we need to do, now I should expect something from my dog. Make sense? Hope it makes sense. All right.
the next question. Oh, that is a great comment. I'm going through the questioners and the chat to find the question that I can answer. And hold on. Okay, very good, very good. John, joining if I had the pop. Yes, you, uh, yes. Uh, sometimes you turn the nose on the phone. Okay, I think this is the next question. Jesse is asking how to potty train adult dog. When we are talking about potty training in adult dog, adult dog means a year and older. In my book, a year and older is an adult now. Any dog, right? Um, if a dog, if an adult dog needs to be potty trained and is having accidents at home, if an adult dog is doing those accidents, having accidents at home, one is the sign that this dog hasn't been potty trained properly, and two could be that this dog is stressed. And when dogs they have accidents or mark at home, that's a sign that that dog is very stressed. And when dogs get stressed, they start marking or ping in the house just to have um, just to have this signal or signs given to you that something is not sitting well, something is bothering them. Maybe some changes has happened in the house or household or the family structure. Something has gone wrong. Something has happened. And this dog, because is very sensitive picks up on those energy those changes and responds to it and re, re, uh, re, re, reacts to them so an adult dog when is having an accident at home it's not that they are having a hard time uh, most of, mostly it's not that they're having a hard time to po be potty trained it's just they're having that conversation with you all you have to do is find out what is it that is causing this dog to be stressed, right? That by peeing, that, you know, humans, we can, we can sit down and ask or talk to another person and say, you know what, this is bothering me, you know? For example, you're, you're watching TV and it's too loud and it's bothering me. I can express that, I can say that, right? But a dog cannot express that. Maybe the TV that you're watching is too loud for the dog, and it doesn't it does bother the dog for example but it can express its feelings emotions right it can't tell you so it will go and pee and that's the language of communication in dogs that's how they communicate they, that's how they say you know what okay how do i express my emotions how, can, how do i express my feelings that what this person or this family is doing how do i express my emotions how do i tell them that i that the tv is too loud or why did you change the, the couch? I like the other couch. It was smelling crappy, but I like that couch. Why did you change it? You know, simple to, oh, why did, why did my uh, other human leave the house? Oh, who is this new human who came in the house? You know, all these things can affect your dog and they get emotional. They are very, if your dog is peeing in the house, that means they're emotional. They're very sensitive creatures. That individual that very sensitive so it's expressing its emotions right so you just have to find out what kind of changes has have been has been happening in your life and focus on those and start managing and realizing okay this is causing stress in my dog and the solutions that i usually offer is to keep the dog on a leash or in confined area or 
in control controlling the dog as much as we can so we don't give that opportunity for the dog to go and pee it's not that we are saying okay don't express your emotions we are saying okay i hear you you're stressed let me help you so hang out with me so i will teach you and guide you what to do so that's how you train an adult dog to not to pee in the house <laughs> or potty train Uh, Irina, Irina, Irina is saying, I found out very useful with Han Solo to play instrument, instrumental music when he was a puppy. He, also, he had some stuffed animal close to him to stimulate his mod, mother. Puppy training will take a little time. Yes, definitely. <laughs> well, you know, uh, John, let me tell you uh, something. You know, when you, when anybody, when anybody decides to have a puppy, you are, it's not that you're digging a hole for yourself. It's, it's a journey that you have to start enjoying it. Don't make a big deal out of it and don't make a problem out of it. This is why it's very important to get a dog when you are physically, emotionally, and mentally are able to have a puppy, right? Uh, and to dedicate time and energy to the puppy, at least for the, you know, for the first year, I would say. I had a client who took three months, I would say. I was it three months? I can't remember exactly. Uh, the owners of this uh, Bailey, uh, they took three months off work to just spend time with the owner. I don't know if it was three months or a year, actually, maybe. Uh, they took work off to be with the puppy, and the puppy, uh, and then puppy grew up, and the owners, uh, they had to go back to work. Um, yeah, one of the owners, they took a year off. They, they were a couple. They took a year off to look after one of the this puppy for a year and after a year the the owner the the owner decided to go back to work and they started bringing their dog to our daycares to look for us to look after the the the, the dog um the dog was perfect i mean that dog is still the the, the idol of our daycare. He passed away a uh, few years ago, but he, he, he was the symbol of the perfection of the dogs that we have, have had and have and we're going to have in our daycare. Because this person dedicated to have a year off to look after this puppy and the puppy was the best dog in the world. That's, that's a commitment that I don't think everybody can make or everybody should make, but that's the commitment. That's the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I want you to understand that owning a puppy, owning a dog is a commitment. It depends on how much energy you put on and how much knowledge do you have or are you going to take in information that you can solve this puzzle easily so it doesn't become a, a, a big problem for you that you already lose the war before it starts, right? As a, as a puppy owner, I, now myself, I have had few puppies. It's a piece of cake to raise a puppy for me. And I, I, I'm looking forward for my next puppy, right? I, I, when it's the right time and right, uh, uh, right time and right place, I will get another puppy. I can't wait to have a puppy. It's so much fun to have a puppy. Uh, they, the only bad thing about having a puppy 
is that they are puppy and boom, all of a sudden they become a dog and boom, you lose it. You lost it. You lose the, you know, they go from puppy to a dog in a, in a flash of time and you say, ah, damn it, I missed it again. Uh, you know, I love that puppy period. <laughs> so enjoy the journey, John. Don't make a big scene. Don't get overwhelmed before you get the puppy. If you know exactly what you're doing and you have joined my online puppy training one-on-one course and you're going to get tons of information there and you're going to know exactly what you're supposed to do, you would not be overwhelmed. You have so much information there that you will say, you know, I know exactly what to do in this case, what I have to do. Follow the rules, follow the steps. You will do it. You will get it. You will enjoy this journey. Next question is from Karen. A uh, four-month-old beagle uh, was lost in the woods last year when shelter found him. He's aggressive, scared of other dogs. Will this change? I be, uh, it's been year, one year, little change. Does he need dog friends? Great question. You know, one thing that uh, the the question, the second part of does he need a dog friend, uh, I will explain it in a moment. But let me ask, answer the first part. He's aggressive, scared of other dogs. When we have a dog who has been in, a, in, in situations that has caused the dog to have this fear and these uh, experiences, uh, Obviously, it does traumatizes them. It does cause a lot of uh, trauma in them. But what you need to focus on is, okay, we have this situation. Do I stick to this story that it was lost in the woods and it's been sheltered and, and is aggressive? Do, do I stick to this story or do I change this story? As a dog owner who goes ahead and adopts or rescues a dog who has issues like this, you need to be 100% sure of what you're doing, 100% of uh, confidence yourself, 100% of commitment to this dog, right? Because uh, uh, when you have a, a weak dog, and you have a weak person, a weak person can help a weak dog. You're just feeding off each other. And when you have a weak dog, you have to have a powerful uh, a human, a human who has, has the power to change the dog's state of mind, life, and overcome, overcome help it to overcome all the obstacles that happens, right? So, that is the mindset that you should have. If you don't have it, you should start building that. You should start learning what to do, how to do, how not to do. The easiest way I suggest you, the way you learn that is stick to one dog trainer, stick to one dog training method, and use that to change the dog. Why I say stick to one dog trainer? Because if you're trying this dog trainer's opinion, that dog's trainer's opinion, that dog's trainer's uh, knowledge, that dog trainer's ideas, you're overwhelming yourself. You're making yourself not to be confident. You're questioning yourself. You know, as a as a doctor, you should know what you're doing, right? For example, if you if you have a doc, if you're a patient in your care and you need to do surgery, you need to know exactly what to do. You're not going to start asking, "Hey guys, uh, do I cut cut here? Uh, what do I what tool do I need to use?" To, you know, if you're starting asking questions, right, you're confusing yourself. So you need to be confident enough of what to do. So choose one trainer, and I hope you choose me. Choose one trainer and learn everything that you can do, you can from this trainer. Invest in that trainer. 
be knowledgeable, exactly know exactly what to do and do that with that dog. Don't do this, that, 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 little bit of this, little bit of that, little bit of that. That causes confusion in you, causes confusion in your dog. I'll give you an example. Cesar Milan says, be firm to your dog and be dominant to your dog and be alpha to your dog, right? And you say, oh, I got to be alpha. I got to be alpha to my dog. But sorrow, sorrow says, don't be alpha to your dog. Be kind to your dog, but play, use play and praise to change the dog's behavior. The other trainer says, no, just feed the dog treats every time he sees another dog. So the dog is going to relate to seeing other dogs to treats. So you see there are three points, three ideas that you already got from three trainers, right? And you're going to start implementing all this. Alpha being alpha and treat, giving treats and also using treat, play and praise that as Soros is, right? So your dog is going to say, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? Are you trying to help me? I'm already confused and you're trying to help me. You are confused yourself. Fix yourself before you can help me. So that's very important for you to understand what you need to do. So just pick one dog trainer, one style, one system, hopefully it's me, and work with your dog and do everything that it tells you. Because instead of going here and there, you got to stick and commit to one system for at least six months a year to see the change. Okay. So that one, that, that itself, I want you to understand, right? And you're saying it's been a year, hasn't been changing much. Right. So imagine a year of living in that state of mind and you haven't been able to change this dog's state of mind. You are feeding that state of mind to your dog. So it's time to change. Right. So instead of doing the same thing, right, change it by doing the right thing. So you you can you have options, right? You can again, as I said, just pick a dog trainer and stick to it. Join my online course. Commit. Join my online course. Learn what you need to do, and do that with that dog. Don't go shopping around this tra- little bit of tip from this trainer, little bit of tip from that trainer. If you do that, you're confusing yourself. You're not going to be able to help this dog. Now, does he, this dog need another friend? I don't think so, and I, I, I don't know exactly, but here's the thing. If you have one dog who, has, who needs help, why well, you want to bring another dog who may need help as well? And then you have to share your energy between these two. You're going to have two problems now. So solve one problem and then bring another dog. In, in, that's one point that I would make. Now, it all depends on your dog's characteristic. If your dog is scared and aggressive towards other dogs, it gives me a, a clue that this dog is not a social dog in general. Right? What, that, what I mean by that is there's different, there are several characteristics of dog, and that applies to humans too. There are people who are social. They want to go out and talk to everybody, hang out with everybody, party with everybody. There are people who want to just, you know, be alone, read their book, have their coffee and read their book on their own at their own time. That's their uh, quality time. There are people who want a little bit of interaction with humans and a little bit of, you know, being home alone. There are dogs also like that, that they have different characteristics, different energy, right? They, they, need, um, they need different uh, style of life, right? So if, 
let's say I was a social, let's say your dog is an antisocial dog, not the antisocial dog, but doesn't like to hang out with other dogs. And you bring a dog who's very social to that environment and your the other dog is pushing your dog to be social with it this your dog is going to be more stressed right because you brought a, a, a social dog to this environment that is not fitting in well uh with this dog right so think of all, all these things think you know in, in yeah introvert yeah it, 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 you just have to find the right right way of helping this dog right and, and again if you if you want if you want my suggestion like you know what to do how how to when to get started if you want to pick a dog trainer as i said uh come to my um come to me if you're if you're selecting me as your dog trainer and the course that you need is the course that you need is the functional dog trainer that's the course that you need to start investing learning and joining if you are willing to help this dog this is the course this has everything that you need to help a dog who has issues like that uh, it will give you the the structure it will give you the foundation it will give you the the techniques and ideas to work with this dog okay hopefully that helps you i i know i went a little bit uh too much with that question but uh it, it is it, it, it is a question that i really needed to dive in junk paula is saying is there a uh, danger in limiting the amount of water that dog gets besides just being thirsty uh yeah actually you know if a dog is not getting enough moisture, that, that is a problem. If they're drinking too much, that can lead to bloating. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, ha uh, hard. Uh, it's going to be uh, not good for the dog. So it depends on the temperature and how, how much exercise they had on that day. Uh, but usually, usually dogs who are on wet food or fresh diet, they tend to drink less water, even on hot days, even on, um, you know, if, if, if like, you know, my, my dog who, my Annie who's on, um, on raw, on raw diet, uh, when he exercises, when she exercises, she drinks a little bit of water, right? Uh, just because she gets thirsty, because she runs and exercises and all that, she drinks a little bit of water. Uh, do, uh, does it matter if the sardines have bones or not? No, actually with bones is better. Uh, dogs can, as long as they're raw, as long as a dog can eat, do, uh, dogs can eat uh, raw sardines. If you don't cook it, it's fine. If you cook it, then it's not good. If you, if it's raw, uh, it's good. A can of sardines, is, which is cooked, is no good for dogs without the bone. If you're going to give, give without the bone. But it's fine. Uh, yeah, sardines are good, are fine, as long as without cooked bones, as long as they are raw. Or as long as they are raw. Um, Okay, next question from P. Camille. Camille, I'm hoping. Paci, Pacifico. Hi, Saro. Uh, our one year old, one and a half year old breed, Caton and Havanese dog, loves to run after birds and butterflies. Is this still normal? Sometimes she can be controlled, but more of the time, not. <coughs> This is a good question. You see, your dog is chasing birds and butterflies, is telling you, hey, take a moment, take some time off, and focus and pay attention to your surrounding. Instead of paying attention to your phone, right? 
Look, there are birds, butterflies. Let's interact with them. Be human. Your dog is giving you clear signal that you need to take a break and be human. Join the nature, enjoy the nature, and be one with nature. There's nothing wrong with dogs interacting with nature, as long as there's no danger. Taj Oli is asking, next question is from Taj Oli, why is my dog so aggressive? Why is your dog so aggressive? Is because you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs. You're not providing exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, and in that order. That that there's a quick answer question, and here's the quick answer. <laughs> All right, that's the reason why your dog is aggressive. So Karen says no alert. That's interesting. Uh, um, watch movie one, two, three. I can't find the $20 course. Okay, so how come you can't find it? So all you have to do is just go to sorrowdogtraining.com slash courses, and there's the course. It's called, you know, the, the, the picture says intro to dog training without treats, and Sorrow Dog Training 101, Beginner's Level, Dog Training Without the Use of Treats. And it's $20. Now, it depends on which country I think you're looking at it. Maybe it changes the price. Uh, I'm not sure if that is what's happening. For example, this is $20 Canadian. If you're from different countries and you're on my website, it may show a different number. But... That's what it is, $20. Uh, John Kipolo says, I got the notification 43 minutes ago. Hmm. Yeah, the, the problem with YouTube is that it either doesn't send or sends it late. So, Uh, Irena, Irena is saying, yes, I did get notification. Yeah, you see the notifications are going a little bit too late. Uh, unfortunately, I don't take PayPal. Uh, we take all kinds of uh, credit cards. Uh, P. Camille is a, should I take away a one year and a half economist dog away from an aggressive dog? I met once and the owner told me to let them get to know a little bit, little time to earn some respect from each other. Um, I will do that in, in, in a very safe way, right? Uh, first, I will make sure that one of them is wearing a muzzle maybe. So if you are not certain about the other dog, that other dog may be aggressive. First of all, that's a signal that the other dog is giving to your dog that, okay, I don't like you. And unfortunately, dog owners, they don't read those messages. And they're saying, you know what, even though, uh, even though my dog is giving a message, I'm still going to force my dog to like the other dog. But if the other dog is already giving you, giving the other dog the, the message that, hey, I don't like you, go away. Don't force them to like each other. Just because the humans like each other, the dogs doesn't mean they need to like each other either, right? Just not natural. But if you want to do it and you feel, feel that, okay, it's a matter of time and they will be okay together, it's just a matter of me, us giving, I feel good about the other dog, it's not that bad, then try using a muzzle just to bring the, uh, bring down the, the safety, bring up the safety measures. So yeah, you don't, you don't um, jeopardize your, any of the dog's um, safety. 
didn't get notification too it says Murray yes we got it all right so there's just a few more minutes I'm gonna to try to answer as many as qu questions as I can uh, big old stuff oh there's a channel called big old stuff that's great <laughs> Do you have a video about what the Beagles should learn first when it comes to training? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, let me take you to my channel. So here we are on my channel, right? The first thing a Beagle should learn how to correct a puppy. That's the first thing. That's the first thing that a puppy should learn. How to correct your puppy. Why is it that I'm saying uh, the first thing that you should teach a dog and then there's a part part one and part two. Okay, correct your puppy part one, part two. Now, why am I saying the first thing that you have to teach your dog is correction? As a dog owner, as a human being, as a as a living thing, you have to teach another living thing that there is always good things and bad things in life. One of the bad, one of the worst things that you can do to your kid, let's use kids as example, is just give, give, give to your kids, right? If your kid says, um, if your kid says, I want this, you give it to them. I, I want that, you give it to them. Oh, I broke this. Oh, it's okay. You broke it. No problem. Uh, oh, I kicked the neighbor's kid. Oh, it's okay. No problem. If it's all positive, what happens? This kid will grow up and uh, become a kind of a person that is going to say, oh, everything that I want, I get, and everything that I do is good, right? So what happens is this human uh, this human thinks everything is positive. So the same thing applies to dogs. You can't just be positive, positive, positive to a dog. You have to also show negative, teach negativity too. So a, a healthy human, a healthy dog will be uh, balanced and healthy and happy when they experience both positive and negative things in their lives. And if they do, they become a more, uh, a more productive, more, much more balanced in their lives, right? So the first thing that you want to teach is correction. Because the, why am I saying the first thing is correction? Because everybody knows how to praise their dog, to give be positive. I don't have to teach that, right? But many people, many dog owners, they don't know how to correct their dog. I don't, I'm not saying punish or correct your dog in a negative way. By the way, I am going to put a video on uh, Tuesday that is going to show you and teach you how to actually correct or punish your dog in the right way. So you have to punish, you have to correct your dog, teach your dog to, to learn how to correct. So when your dog makes a mistake, you can correct it. So if you are saying to your, if you, when you teach your dog, the correction the proper way of correction and that's the first thing that you're teaching now you go and start teaching your dog for example how to sit you're saying rover sit and rover doesn't sit and you say for example no you and your dog is familiar with the correction word and the cue and you say no the dog says oh i'm making a mistake so i should be correcting myself so the dog is going to sit right so that's how you how you start building that um, tree of knowledge in your puppy. So the first thing is that. Um, oh yes, we got a super chat from Cynthia. Thank you so much, Cynthia. That is a very kind of you. Thank you. The first super chat of the day. Thank you, Cynthia. I, uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative that you uh, supported the channel and uh, with the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, 
And here's the question from Cynthia. So whoever um, offers a super chat uh, uh, gets their answer questions answered right away. Hi, sir. I treat train Milo. He is a three-year-old Lhasa. If I stop treat training, will bad behavior start? Actually, no. The good behaviors are going to start popping up. The reason for that is because when you use treats and train your dog with treats, your dog is very limited and does exactly what it needs to do by the treats. You, because it knows, okay, if I want this, uh, I need to do this in order to get treats. So what ha will happen when you use treats, your dog is going to give you behaviors that are related to me giving treats, and it's going to do only those. So you're limiting your dog to do only those behaviors that are related to treats. So what I mean by that, if your dog, if you have trained your dog to sit and then you give treats, your dog is constantly going to give you sit, sit behavior just to get the treats. And that itself uh, stresses the dog because they want to they want to keep getting treats. They are addicted to treats, so they will keep sitting, 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 sitting. For example, to get treats from you. Now, as soon as you remove treats, they say, "Hmm, I don't know what to do to get treats, <laughs> right? And what else can I do?" So they don't know anything else what to do. They don't they don't know what to do after that, right? So. What they will do is they will start being more open to uh, opportunities, more open to uh, situations to get treats, to, to still want to get treats. They will work hard, but you're not giving them treats. They will say, okay, whatever I do, I'm not getting treats, but I want treats. The dog is going to say, I still want treats, but I, whatever I'm doing, I'm not getting treats. So that will happen naturally because you're trans transitioning from treats to no treats. So that there is this transition period in between that the dog is very confused, right? But as soon as you pass that transition, the dog is going to say, hmm, I don't need treats anymore to do things. I can live normal, I can do things normally, right? A natural behavior should be given and performed naturally, not forced. When you are using treats, the dog is forced to do that behavior. But when you don't use treats, the dog does it naturally. Does it make sense? So what will happen is your dog is going to think more openly. It's going to be less dependent on certain things, including treats, to give you behavior. It's going to be naturally starting to give you behaviors naturally. When I say naturally, is without without um, without being dependent on things, right? Be, be, without being uh, dependent on whatever it is, treats, toys, rewards, whatever it is, it will it will start saying, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Because now my human and the interaction that I'm getting from my human is more valuable than treats. Uh, John Kipola is um, okay. That's a good. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, education is half of the challenge. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Beagle, stop. Do you have a video about how to fix separation anxiety with beagle puppies? Uh, beagle, stop. If you have a puppy. You have to understand, beagles, puppies, they're going to have separation anxiety anyways. 
And when they have it, it's a sign that that puppy is very sensitive and you shouldn't be, for example, uh, you shouldn't be putting that dog puppy in a situation that goes through that anxiety. So puppies are usually too sensitive, too young to be separated. It all depends on how, your, how old your puppy is. If your puppy is about eight to 12 weeks old, uh, definitely you don't want to separate it from its parents or the human, right? So if they're older, they still are in that sensitive stage. So you don't want to put them in the situation that they get stressed. So I wouldn't. If you, if you feel that your puppy is, puppies are having issue with the separation anxiety, that's a clear sign that they're not ready to be separated yet. Uh, they, they, need to, they need to stay in that state of mind until they gain that confidence. And that only happens through time. And if you need videos about more about that uh, topic uh, what i can do is i'm going to share a few videos let me there we go i'm going to it's called dog the dog separation anxiety behavior explained. So it's in the chat area. Okay. Yes, John. Uh, the, the the only reason I'm saying that. I, I hope I under, you understood the concept and I hope I explained it in a way that made, made sense. I'm not saying, you know, I'm the best I, 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 and you should follow me only because I'm the best. No. The only reason I say to follow me and follow, follow me, my guideline is to reduce your stress, right? When we shop around, for example, if I need a coffee machine, right? I start, first of all, oh, I don't have a coffee machine. I, itself, it's stressful. Then I go to the store and there's 50 coffee machines lined up there. Now I'm wondering, which one do I pick up? Which one of these coffee machines are going to work for me? That it has the right price, right, right. Uh, quality that I need to produce the coffee that I need, uh, the right look that it, I need for my kitchen, uh, size, all these things has to be ideal, right, in order for me to select the, the coffee machine that I need. And when you're there, all you're doing is just looking at them, right, and you don't know what to do until... The salesman comes and says, what do you need? You're saying, I need a coffee machine. Is this for uh, one person or 10 people? Oh, for, for me only. Uh, do you drink uh, grind coffee or ready coffee? Oh, ground coffee. Okay, this is the one. They give you that one. Boom, you're done. Right? So that's the concept. Imagine you're a dog owner and you have all these options out there. There are all these people, dog trainers, telling you all this and that. You, and you're standing in front of them and you're trying to figure out which one to choose. As long as I know what your problem is and here's the solution. Here's the, the package. Here's the coffee machine that you need. Boom, done. You're on your way to have a great coffee. I hope that makes sense. Kevin D says, I love dog training lives. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you mean the live dog, dog training that we're doing. This, I hope that's what you mean. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, okay, the 
the live show that we're doing. Um, yes, it will happen. Don't rush. Don't rush. Uh, okay, so here's a good question. X X X T Z. Ah, that's a good name. Very very creative. Uh, what to do with dog that destructively chews? He gets two hours of exercise a day on walks. Okay. Um, let me see how the question is. All right. So, all right. So this would be the last question that I'm going to answer. And this question and this answer is going to blow your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear this answer? Because this is a very common question problem. And everybody, all dog trainers out there give the same answer. But I'm going to give you a different answer, and it's going to blow your mind. Okay, ready? Ready? All right. Okay, let me show you this too. So in my opinion, if you want to have a great dog, if you have a good dog, you need to provide your dog's daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Right? That's the formula. Right? What you're doing here, you're providing exercise. I'm not sure if you're providing training, socialization, care, and then affection with your dog, but that should be fixed too. But number one clue here is that you're providing exercise, yes, but you're exercising your dog too much. Two hours of exercise of daily walks is just too much for any living thing. No living thing, especially predator type of breed of dogs, predator dogs who are predators, dogs are predators, they should not be walking two hours a day. Maximum, maximum for an adult healthy dog should be walking one hour a day. So what I would suggest you to do is reduce the exercise. Reduce the exercise from two hours to even half an hour for now. What I mean by that is when we have a dog who has this behavior, I don't want to call it ill. I don't want to call it a sick dog. I want to say it's unhealthy, unbalanced. When we have an unbalanced dog, we have to do things properly with that dog. So in this case, what I would suggest is reduce the exercise to even half an hour maximum for now for a few months, maybe two, three months, until your dog is nice and healthy and balanced. And then you can go up to an hour a day. So reduce the exercise, focus on more providing mental stimulation, which is training, and reduce the exercise, which is physical stimulation, add more mental stimulation, add some social stimulation, which is socialization as well, and then provide proper care, and then affection. Then you will see this behavior is going to go away. Okay, hope that makes sense. All right, everybody, thank you for being here. Again, if you want to train your dog, if you're serious about commitment and dedicating your time and effort and energy and money to training your dog, here's an opportunity. For one week only, I'm offering the intro to dog training without the treats plus 15 minutes of Zoom call personally with me to deal with your issues that you're having in person. I'm, I'm, this is going to be offered only for a week until next week. And it's only $20. $20. Okay? That's all you have to pay. Why am I charging only $20? 
because I want you to commit to it. If you're serious, if you're committing to it, you should pay for it. This is, you're not paying arm and a leg, you're paying only $20. This course gives you the, the foundation that you need to learn what to do and what to expect and how to start training to train your dog. Plus you get 15 minutes of Zoom call with me for only $20. That's, this is the only offer that I'm, and this is the only time that I'm offering for a week to only those who are watching this live show. And you, I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting this anywhere else. This is just between us, between me and you. If you are serious to joining in, learning about dog training, learning about what to do and how to do things with your dog and get started in training your dog and you're committed to do, you have the opportunity now to join for only $20 Canadian. In your country, it may be uh, different, but doesn't matter what type of dog you have. If you have a puppy or a dog dog, that's the course that you can join. Um, John, you already have uh, joined my puppy training course. You don't need to join. That's uh, that you already getting a lot of tons of information there. You don't need to join on this one. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about that. All right. Thank you very much for everybody for being here and taking the time to learn and understand your dog and become an educated dog lover. If you are liking the content that I'm sharing in this channel, please share the channel with other dog lovers. I need to grow this channel. I need your help to help me to grow this channel. So spread, share this channel with other dog owners. If you're benefiting from this content that I'm sharing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post a video or if I go live. So hopefully YouTube is going to do its part and notify you that I am creating new content. Um, other things, if you want to learn more about dogs and become an educated dog lover even further, join one of my online courses. If you're local, if you're in North Vancouver, Vancouver area, and you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, use my private training. Hopefully we'll see you soon. And if you need any help, additional help, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave those questions in the comments area. I read all the comments and answer all the questions. And until next time, have fun with your dog. Enjoy your dog. And, you know, you can email me too as well. Yes. And have fun with your dog. Don't get uh, uh, frustrated. And yes, watch my video coming up on Tuesday, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. I really enjoyed the session. I got to go now. I have a life to, to live, and I hope you have a life to live too, and hopefully I'll see you next time, okay? Take care.